Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name's Steps Basic, and welcome back to Magmirizu. Hi. So, it's been a little while. No, it hasn't. I do one every week. But anyway, uh, that's not what's important. What's important is for today, I wanted to talk about something interesting, intriguing even. See, there's this thing about human beings being individuals. It's an interesting little concept, right? How we are all a combination of our own minds as well as, you know, everything we've lived through and everything we've been through, learned lessons and whatnot that have accumulated to create us in the end. And that sort of thing, yes, I'm going to be talking about the inside thing again. Um, that sort of thing can lead us to enjoy or not enjoy certain things in the world, including, in my case, the, uh, the Bo Burnham special. And part of the reason why I, you know, I've mentioned all my reasons why I didn't like the, the special in and of itself. Uh, one of the things that I feel made it so I didn't like it, couldn't enjoy it, as it were, even though a lot of other people did, is it comes down to the fact that, that in my own life experiences, it just came across a certain way that didn't appeal to me see again the video where I talk about that and and part of that is due to the fact that I am old and you know so a lot of the things that were said in the special felt way too obvious to me and in a lot of ways didn't um, resonate with me on account of the fact that it's something I know and have known for a long time but then it comes down to an interesting idea amongst the folks who did enjoy it, did watch it, and, and take something away from it, and were able to enjoy it and felt like it was I inspiring in some way. And again, I'm glad if you did. I'm not saying that there's anything bad about you taking away something good from it, because I'm pretty sure the intent was positive, even if I received it differently than you did. And uh, part of the the thing is, of course, you know, interpretation in our own individual uh, our own individual lessons and how we've grown up to be who we are I am 35 this year will turn 36 in November I'm older than Bo Burnham and I'm older than a lot of the people who enjoyed it so I can easily chalk up the fact that I didn't enjoy it because I'm too old <laughs> but at the same time there's another twist to it because I don't feel like I would have enjoyed it even if I were at the same age as Mr. Burnham or younger than Mr. Burnham because of the simple fact that my experiences in life lead me down a different path, led me down a different path. So let's take another look at another game, <laughs> another topic, uh, same topic, but you know, another thing. So The Last of Us Part Two, right? The overall message and idea behind it was vengeance is bad, and if you do bad things, then, you know, don't expect that the, 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 you 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 know what I feel about that too, but in my own way, I felt mildly insulted by the game on account of the fact that that is a lesson that I already know, and that sort of thing is kind of a universal aspect. I feel like anybody who is told a message, especially if they know the message, and especially if the person delivering the message doesn't do it in the proper way then it's going to seem condescending and insulting to the person receiving the message. I.e., you know, you need to work out to keep in shape so that you're healthy. As opposed to, yeah, I know this, I am aware of this, I do this, and things don't progress quickly. And then, you know, so it's like somebody who comes up and says, man, you're fat, you need to get fat, you need to get in shape, you need to lose fat, you need to get in shape, that sort of thing. And it's delivery versus intent. The person who's delivering the message, i.e. you need to work out to get in health, get in shape, get healthy, is not delivering the message in the proper way, so it comes off as an insult rather than, you know, encouragement, and that sort of thing. And of course, the same time, the same message properly delivered can be ju received just as badly if the message is delivered repeatedly. You know what I mean? I know it's a little vague. Um, but, like, so I 
am aware of my weight problem. I am almost where I used to be. I've lost a few pounds now, but I, I was almost 300 pounds, right? And I have, in numerous occasions since when I was in the military to even now, been told I need to lose weight, I need to lose weight, I need to lose weight, I need to lose weight. It's like, come on, man. It doesn't matter how many times you tell me. I'm well aware of the fact that I have to lose weight. So the message, even though it's a good message, becomes a little clouded and a little little detrimental. However, a person hearing the message for the first time, vengeance is a bad thing, may be like, wow, I never thought about it that way. So people looking at the Bo Burnham special are going to be in the same way and looking at a lot of the folks who, who took a positive message away from the, the special were younger people. Were younger people, people in their mid to late 20s. So they haven't experienced life in the same way that I have. So watching this special, I feel like like I, I took away, he's complaining about stuff that everybody is feeling right now. So, okay, so again, water is wet, sky is blue, etc., etc. And he's he's making points that people already kind of agree with and things that we've heard millions of times before. So it's like my individual approach to this comes across as the the guys being belittling, demeaning, condescending as well as stating the obvious. People who haven't heard these messages repeatedly or ad nauseum will be like, "Wow, it's so good seeing somebody finally put put voice to, to how I'm feeling, you know? And it's like, well, I mean, you could have done that yourself. But that's the whole thing about it is we all have our own individual experiences through life and how we grow up and how we turn into the people we are now. I mean, even a good way to look at it is like millennials, right? I am technically a millennial. I have, I was born in 1985 and even though the the age range has shifted a lot. I've seen it go from 80 to 85, and now it seems to have settled on 80. But even considering that sort of aspect, I more identify with the mindset, the, the enjoyment of arts and stuff, and everything else with Gen X, which was technically my mom's generation. Um, and a lot of my friends happen to fall within that age range of Gen X and that's because I associate with them and part of it is like I didn't grow up the same way a lot of Millennials did I grew up in a bad situation I grew up under abuse I grew up in a backward city very small very backwards and whatnot and a lot of ideas were backwards and confused and, and wrong <laughs> and as such I grew up in a different mindset, almost like I grew up in a completely different era. But even still, looking at people who arguably grew up in similar circumstances, no two people are the same. Even looking at me and my brother as a good comparison, because we grew up the same way, um, with a pretty poopy childhood, but where we differ is after we turned 18. My brother turned 18 and was immediately out of the house and trying to live his own life. But of course, he had the problems of our childhood weighing him down as he's trying to move through life. And so he ended up crashing. And then there's me. I left home at 17, well, a little bit after. I, I think I, yeah, I was 18 by the time I left home because I had to wait until I was actually 18 to leave. But as soon as I turned 18, I joined the military and I left difference between how he and I experienced our early adulthood comes down to time. I went to boot camp, went to A school, went to the military, got married, had a kid. I just kept moving. I didn't have time to slow down. My brother, he moved out, went to live with his girlfriend, and they had a slow and calm life. And so in the end, he ended up having a having a lot more time to, to see the stuff that I didn't have time to focus on. So in the end, while we're both still pretty broken, <laughs> I am I, I present more managing it. Mostly because I still keep myself moving and I don't give myself time to stop and think about it. And so but the differences between the two of us really end up showing how we feel. Now, 
admittedly, a lot of the stuff that we, we express and how our feelings are comes from a little bit of the same place, i.e. we both are incredibly opposed to child abuse, child neglect, and, and mistreatment of children on account of the fact that where we come from. <laughs> and, you know, stuff like that. But then you look at somebody who didn't live the way we lived, who has the same idea, i.e. child abuse bad, very obvious point, will not approach it from the same angle as we would because we've seen it and lived through it. See what I mean? So we may be a little bit more impassioned about it, as well as having a bit more of a weight behind what we say. Does that make the other person wrong? No, because the ultimate message is child abuse is bad. <laughs> and again, that also comes back to one of my other videos where I was talking about, you know, our own hypocrisies, i.e., you know, a smoker telling people that smoking is bad, while in turn makes them a hypocrite, also doesn't really skew the message just because they smoke doesn't mean that smoking is good, even though they say, and when they say smoking is bad, doesn't mean they're lying. Because the smoker would know more about how bad smoking is for them than the average layperson. Now, of course, a, uh, a lung, an ear, note, and throws doctor, uh, any doctor who's ever, you know, studied that sort of thing would know more about, the sm about, about it than the smoker would. So a doctor telling you the smoking is bad should carry more weight than the smoker would. Man. And that's the thing that a lot of people like, they, they, they like to, to think about. It's like, oh, if somebody comes up and says something is bad, but you've never experienced it, so why should we listen to you? Well, just because I've never experienced said thing doesn't mean that I'm wrong. Because I can point out the obvious apparent things to it that are wrong. Therefore not saying, therefore saying that something is wrong even though I've never been through it does not invalidate my statement. You know what I mean? <laughs> Additionally, there are some more interesting aspects to individuality and how we grow up and how we experience things and some of it can actually come straight from and to um, pronunciations and things like that um, how we may have quote-unquote lacking knowledge that every adult person should know but it's seen as a failure on our part even though in some ways it's just because of the fact that we've never experienced that and I don't remember where it was from, but there was a, a joke um, in a show at one point where a person saw the word wind and pronounced it wind because the only experience they have is with the word spelt exactly the same, pronounced differently, winding or wind to wind something as opposed to pronouncing it wind when, when, when applied to air movement, you know? So they pronounced it wind and say, oh, is it pronounced wind? I, always, I thought it was always wind. I've only ever seen it written down. And so it's like that aspect is, while played for a joke and was kind of funny, is a very, like, an actual abstract problem with how people see and experience the world, i.e. we're not going to, not everybody has ever heard every single word pronounced. So they're not going to have the knowledge in their head on how to pronounce something or everything like wind versus wind they're spelt exactly the same and they're an american or they're, they're an english word they're english words spelt exactly the same pronounced two different ways and you know meaning two different things so in that aspect the individuality of the person could easily fail to interpret that i.e and this one actually comes from TikTok. So you see, TikTok's not just used for bad jokes and other stuff. There's actually uh, good messages on there and helps me process my thoughts some way. And there was a young lady on there who, I think she was an EMT from the look of it. Uh, I didn't watch any of her other videos, but apparently she got belittled and insulted and, you know, the jerks on the internet being the jerks on the internet, doing what they do for not knowing that humans and dinosaurs never existed on the planet at the same time. Now, of course, open to interpretation, dinosaurs, you know, our own living dinosaurs being like alligators and whatnot, but, you know, point stands, humans and dinosaurs never existed on Earth at the same time. So, she didn't know that. <laughs> and then she went on to tell the story about a very intelligent person 
who did not know what Roy G. Biv meant. You know, red, orange, yellow, blue, or red, orange, yellow, blue, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Roy G. Biv, the colors of the rainbow. He did not know that that was an actual structured order of how colors are, you know, spectrumized, the spectrum of colors, as it were, however you want to say it. <laughs> and that guy had been through college, presumably, had been working in the field for an, a while and didn't understand what Roy G. Biv was. And admittedly, I didn't know what Roy G. Biv was until I was in college in my electronics class. I knew that I knew what a spectrum was. I knew what the colors, what the order of the colors were, arguably. I didn't know what Roy G. Biv was. <laughs> Even though if I'd have stopped and thought about it for a moment, I would have been able to tell you. However, the way I look at it, it was red, orange, yellow, blue, green, purple. <laughs> Not even indigo and violet, just purple. Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. I would have been Roy G. B <laughs> but then when I went into college and took my, my uh, electronics class, that's when I learned what Roy G. Biv was. And, of course, people who don't function with a need for something like the spectrum of colors, i.e. artists, electricians, electronics majors, people who work in that sort of field, they're not going to need to know what Roy G. Biv is. I... I'm not an archaeologist. I'm not a paleontologist. I don't need to know that dinosaurs and humans never existed on the planet at the same time. Now, of course, there are certain common knowledge things that people should know, like um, the Earth is round, etc., stuff like that. But do we really need to know that if we don't have to actually focus on anything regarding the circumference or shape of the Earth? No, we don't. But that doesn't really excuse people trying to convince other people otherwise. That just points out the fact that we don't need to know it. Now, of course, I always say pursue knowledge. You know, find out all the information you can. Learn everything you can from life because life isn't a race so much. But, you know, it's your own, it's your own, you know, enjoyment which is important. And in my opinion, the more knowledge you have, the more you can enjoy things. However, also there is the counterpoint where... Uh, too much knowledge can be incredibly depressing, but we're not going to go into that. And all of that comes down to how we, as people, are individuals and learn and, and learn things, learn information and stuff differently and know different things and experience different things. And in the end, yeah, people be, people be individual, individuals, yo. <laughs> but anyway, apart from that, that was just me kind of spitballing and uh, free thinking as it were as far as announcements for today. Yes, I'm moving announcements to the end of the episode. As for announcements today, we have still moved through um, Borderlands and we've done now the, island, the zombie island of Dr. Ned and now we're going to be starting up, well, we've already started up, uh, T-Bone Junction and the secret armory of General Knox, which... I like it, but it's not one of my favorite DLCs. It's kind of lower on the totem pole, mostly because of the driving. Um, apart from that, I had a lot of fun playing uh, a demo this week, Satori. That was really neat. And at the same time as I'm not really good at those games, I still kind of enjoyed it, you know. Um, I got my CPAP machine, so we're going to hopefully see some improvement in my uh, energy levels throughout the day. So far, it's been it's pretty... It's, it's been all right, you know. It's, it, it hasn't been... Too much of a, too uh, much of a, uh, it's been working. That's what I'm trying to say. But anyway, apart from all that, what sort of thoughts do you have on the individual nature of man? Do you have any funny anecdotes where people didn't know something that you thought they should know or vice versa? You didn't know something that people thought you should know. Be, be sure to share those in the comment section down below. I'll be happy to read them and react to them. And uh, apart from all that, thank you so much for joining me for this episode of The Community Show. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, please go and poke that like button for me. If you'd like to see more from me, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And of course, as always, you're more than welcome to leave a comment in the comment section down below. And I expect you soon again. And when I can, if I can, you know all that jazz. And tune in next time for another topic at another time. And until then, night.